Okay, it's nearly ferreting season again, and um, I've been asked to do put together a little video of some of the equipment that you need to start ferreting. Uh, so let's just have a look at some of the stuff that I take. Um, other people take different things, other people don't take as much. Um, but have a look at it and make your own mind up. Okay, for ferret welfare you need a good strong method of uh, looking after your ferrets. Uh, I don't like to see ferrets kept in a sack. Um, they can get cold, they can get wet, they can get trodden on. Uh, so a good strong ferret box for me is essential. Okay, the two you're looking at here, uh, the one on the left, is what a box that I've made and it will fit three ferrets in it. The one on the right is a, a box that I bought a few years ago. Um, it's a bowback box, which is great as it fits your body nicely as, you, as you're walking around with the ferrets and it keeps them a little bit more secure. Okay, you'll see that they've got good catches on the boxes and there's plenty of um, ventilation as well. Inside the box I, I merely put either shavings um, to keep them dry or when the weather gets a bit colder I'll put straw and shavings in. Okay, on the left we have a folding pocket knife, two and a half inch blade. I use that for gutting my rabbits. Um, bigger blades can be useful for other, other things but they're too big and you, you risk um, popping the intestines of the rabbit if you start using a bigger knife. Okay, next to that there's a folding pocket saw, that one's an opinal. And it's useful for cutting through tree roots that you may come across if you have to dig down to your ferrets. Okay, some I have come across are just too thick to cut with a spade. Okay, next to that, cheap pair of, of secateurs. They're used for clearing away any brambles or any other undergrowth around a hole prior to netting up. If I haven't had a chance to clear that vegetation away, um, days before I go ferreting. Okay, and finally, next to that there's a, a small torch, useful for if you lose a ferret last thing in the evening, just before it gets dark, or for looking into rabbit holes once you've started digging, digging down to see if you can see your ferrets or any further rabbits up the hole. Okay, I, I always take a drink for the ferrets, um, take a little metal dish to put the water in and a bottle of clean drinking water. Um, and I take plenty, as it means I can have a drink as well. I always use a ferret locator or a ferret finder. It's a method of electronically knowing where your ferrets are underground at any time. And it's essential. Um, if you want to save a lot of time digging down to your ferrets. This is a Debon Mark III. It's a very accurate uh, receiver. It will locate your ferrets down to a depth of 16 feet, according to the manufacturer. And the collars, they have tiny little batteries in them as well. Okay, and obviously you need one collar for each of your ferrets. If you're going to net your rabbits when you've ferreted them and not shoot them or not send a dog after them, you'll need some purse nets. Um, all mine are made in fluorescent colours. I make them myself. Um, they're three foot six inches long and I have some that are five feet long. Um, I use hazel for the pegs, but you can use plastic tent pegs or in fact any other material that's suitable. I store and carry all of my equipment um, in two ways. First of all, I use a game bag where I keep the vast majority of my nets and my torch and the knife and the saw. And then I use a jackpike dog handler's vest and I can fit 
20 nets in each pocket on that, so I can carry 40 nets around in total in that vest. Okay, it's also a useful method of just carrying your ferret finder, putting it in, the, the massive pockets on it, easy to get into, uh, and it's a very strong vest, made of thick um, cordura or nylon canvas. For digging down to ferrets, if you need to dig, the three important pieces of equipment that I use. On the left, you can see a probe, which I use when I'm digging for locating the pipe as I get a bit closer to the ferret. And what that means is that you don't end up putting the spade straight through the middle of the ferret and killing it. Okay, it's made of 8mm rebar. I've cut a, a four inch piece off it and then had it welded onto the top as a handle. Okay, in the middle, you've got a bulldog spade, which is one of the best um, ferreting spades you can get, in my opinion. Uh, it's very strong, it's got a fiberglass shaft and a, and a rounded but pointed nose to it. And you can get great leverage because of the angle that the blade is set at. And then on the right you can see a military grade um, shovel, nowhere near as strong as the bulldog. But it can have its uses as it can be used as a pick as well as a, a digging implement. Okay, I will take either or, I won't take the bulldog and, and the little shovel, I'll take one or the other. But 90% but of the time it will be the bulldog spade I'll take. This is the quick set long net. I have two 25 yard long nets in this basket. And it's a, a net that I can encircle a warren or put it on the edge of the warren in the direction that I think any rabbits are going to bolt. And this will catch any rabbits that have escaped a net or where you've been unable to net up. Useful bit of kit. Okay, so that's a quick insight into some of the equipment that I take ferreting with me. Um, it's not the be all and end all. You can take more, you can take less. Uh, hopefully that's been of some use to uh, new ferreters out there. Um, and you can see most of this equipment in use in some of the ferreting videos that I've made. Okay guys.